Hello, I'm afraid it's very nice to finally be able to see you again. As Kristen said, my name is Austin Bayshore. I am a leader in the Youth Caucus of the Ohio Green Party. I am very excited to be here today to talk to you all about the values of the Green Party. In 2024, we are looking into the future with hope for a better Ohio, a better United States, and a better world. From the polar ice caps to the rainforests of South America, the world in which we live is on fire. Scientists say we have less than 10 years to halt our collision course with climate catastrophe before it is too late. This emergency requires us to rise up and to be our best. This may be our now, but it does not have to be our future. Never in my life has our future seemed so uncertain. The genocide in Palestine, the climate crisis, and the looming threat of a coming Cold War with China. But when people come together and reach for a brighter future, we've shown that we can change the course of history. We can change it. All we have to do is try. We can make great things happen again. The issue our state faces is, are not one-off events. From environmental collapse, to social justice, to housing issues and women's issues, all of our struggles are interconnected. The Green Party offers solutions not only to avert climate catastrophe, but to fix Ohio for good. And as Greens, we do not back down from predicting. Our lawsuits have sent corrupt public election officials to prison before. And our local community activists have been working tirelessly to protect our local ecological communities. When it comes to women's issues, the Green Party has been on the front line of the fight against far-right abortion bans to the banning the sale of firearms to those convicted of domestic violence. The Greens have been on the forefront of racial justice and economic inequality. The Greens have been fighting the fight against police brutality and state violence against indigenous and black and brown people. The Green Party has been supporting the equal rights of LGBTQ plus people since our inception in the 1980s. Yes, same-sex marriage may be legal, but it is not over when LGBTQ plus Ohioans can get fired from their jobs or kicked out of their houses for loving who they love. In a time when human rights are under attack, our support for the LGBTQ plus community will never cease. We will recognize the civil rights of those of all gender identities and sexual orientations. It is time for the Ohio Republican Party to stop the show. Multiple, multiple bills have been introduced targeting LGBTQ plus youth, students, athletes, and organizations in Ohio. We say not one step back. We will enact a comprehensive anti-discrimination law that makes discrimination based on gender sexuality, or gender identity, illegal in housing, work, and daily public life. You are never alone, and it is never your fault. For the past 20 years, we have been voting blue, but getting red in return. It has been long past time for that to end. Together, we can break the ping pong politics trap. The answer to the growing right-wing lurch of Ohio politics is a revolutionary agenda to end the economic misery of millions of people within our state. We can end the scandal that is half a million Ohio children living in poverty. With courage, we can change the course of history. With vision, we can create the cleanest and greenest economy. And with ambition, we can create a state for the greater good. The Ohio Republican Party likes to talk big talk on energy independence, but they cannot be farthest from the truth. The Republican Party is killing our planet. A Green New Deal will create thousands of good paying jobs, halt climate change, and make the wars for oil obsolete. In order for real energy independence, we must go green. There is no need for the importation of wind, water, and waves from autocratic nations that abuse human rights. Not only this, but a completely green energy system will drastically reduce your energy costs during a cost of living crisis. Solar and wind have, come, have become some of the record low prices for energy production and only continue to decline, while fossil fuels and nuclear only continue to add to the economic pressures of the average American. This can only be achieved by an independent politics outside of the two-party trap. We can cancel student debt, make health care and college free, create a welcoming path to citizenship, and end systemic racism. Unlike the two-party system, which has cost us our reproductive freedoms, 
the brains support bodily autonomy and reproductive rights regardless of gender or sexual orientation. The Greens have advocacy groups for underrepresented voices, such as our National Women's Caucus and Lavender Caucus, to ensure gender and sexual minorities have a voice within our party. The nuclear energy industry has led Ohio down a dark path of political corruption at a tune of $60 million. Yet those Republicans who created this artificial crisis go unpunished and even reelected. Every worker deserves a union. And we will fight for them to make sure that they are respected at work. In a time of stagnant wages, raging inflation, and record low union membership, the Greens are a party of labor that can flourish. We do not believe in the capitalist lies that divide us. Labor and the environment can co coexist together. And the existence of one does not negate the existence of the other. As Greens, we value our policy of social justice by eradicating anti-black racism, Islamophobia and anti-Semitism in the streets and in the workplace. In the 21st century, racism and racial discrimination are unacceptable in any society. We oppose all forms of sexism and the hatred of women, <clears throat> privatization of public lands, exploitation of native tribes, deregulation, and militarism abroad. We cannot afford to survive a climate crisis on top of a Cold War with China. In the 2024 presidential election, there is no lesser evil. We have seen how both Donald Trump and Joe Biden's policies as president have destroyed the middle class, promoted catastrophic wars abroad, rescinded human rights domestically, and ignored the oncoming climate meltdown. President Biden has approved thousands of pipeline projects, more than any president in history. On July 2nd, 2021, the Gulf of Mexico caught fire causing a horrendous ecological disaster for the aquatic communities. <clears throat> On March 13, 2023, climate assassin Biden began the Willow Project, an oil drilling project in the plains of the North Slope of Alaska. Five drill pads and 250 oil wells have been approved for construction. This project will produce up to 750 million barrels of oil and 287 million tons of carbon emissions plus other greenhouse gases. This is the same pollution as a million homes annually. Native people in Alaska have been horrifically affected by the ongoing project in terms of food, sociocultural, and public health systems. Candidate Biden promised to ban fracking on federal land, codify Roe v. Wade, forgive $10,000 of student loan debt, end Middle Eastern conflicts, pass a bill for 12 weeks of parental leave, stop the border wall, and overhaul immigration. President Biden has done none of that. America has voted blue, but we have got red in return. The faults of the Biden administration does not make a looming Trump administration any better. Donald Trump bashes immigrants and is a racist loudmouth. For five years, Donald Trump has shown nothing but contempt for democracy. He has incited violence on the streets and online. Yet, in spite of all this, a large number of influential American politicians, journalists, and media personalities have supported him and sought his approval. The Trump administration banned transgender soldiers from serving, serving in the United States Armed Forces. And just yesterday, the Biden administration announced a return of another Trump era policy that bans US consulates and embassies from displaying the pride flag. It is time to end the lesser of two evils and stand up for the greater good, like our lives depend on it, because they in fact do. The Greens are here and we are the only party willing to create a future for us all. As the youth of America, we ask, why are we poor as we study? Why are we so anxious as we love? Why are we more unequal at work? And why can't we buy things without a loan? Why can't young people live independently? And why do others decide our future? We gave power to a president who destroys this country and to politicians who are parasitic on our democracy. Corporations need our overtime and accumulate wealth on our behalf. American politics have turned into an endless cartel of vested interests. It's time to put our future within our hands. I, like many other youth in Ohio, are tired of electing politicians who will die in 20 years, determining the rest of our lives. We have, in the United States, an imperialist power structure built on ruling class bipartisanship with a greedy pursuit of profits. We oppose, as Greens, all collusions of imperial interests, the looming threat of war, 
monopoly on capitalist interests, and the indiscriminate destruction of our environment. Green politics can open a door to the democracy of the people. We must reclaim America from the cartel of vested interests with policies and campaigns that focus on the principles of humanity and international law with a respect for diversity. With that, we must be vigilant. The essentials for life should not run a profit. A decent paying job must be a legal guaranteed right in the Constitution. A minimum wage must be set to $15 an hour with living income guaranteed for those who cannot work. Those who are at the most risk of poverty must be the most protected. While those well-off billionaires live in their golden palaces completely devoid of social issues and economic issues, the everyday American they are exploiting are struggling to get by. If the United States is the greatest country in the world, we must act like it. And no person should choose between going to the doctor or paying for their house. We must create a completely free and public healthcare system no more arguments about Trump care or Obamacare. Health care is a right for all people, regardless of citizenship or legality. We must make education free for state institutions and work to eliminate all forms of student debt. We must fully fund the rebuilding of our infrastructure and transport, water, and utility systems. Also, we must end foreclosures and evictions and work to end all mortgage interest payments to the banks. We must end mass incarceration of oppressed working class people. Marijuana must be legalized, and the vote of all Ohioans must be respected. We must fully prosecute all acts of police brutality and violence. We must end the death penalty. In Ohio, Black Lives Matter. And we must swiftly move to abolish a criminal organization known as ICE. And we must not allow one more deportation. We must also swiftly move to create a gender equal society. We must establish Ohio as a feminist utopia. Women still earn 22% less than men, and the gap is even more severe for Black and Latino women. This is inexcusable. We will close the gender age gap and end the gender division of labor. We stand in creating a state where transgender women can access the health care they deserve as human beings. And we must end the hateful rhetoric towards LGBT plus citizens by adding an amendment in the Ohio Constitution saying marriage is gender neutral, and all people must be guaranteed the rights as well as banning discrimination in housing and employment. We find it atrocious that former Governor John Kasich sent Ohio police officers to Sandy Rock in order to quell the First Amendment rights of Native tribes. We must solve the issues in inner city schools by hiring African American teachers and teachers who can speak more than one language. We will fight to uphold the 1997 decision by the Ohio Supreme Court in uh, Zeral versus the state that says the funding of our systems fail to provide a thorough and efficient system of common schools. I was born in 1997. In over 21 years, legislators have failed to find a solution. Deep-rooted traditions have resulted in repressive societal aspects for women. Women's liberation is more than a ballot in the box every four years or so. We need an Equal Rights Amendment that guarantees equal pay, health care, and paid leave. On average, women get paid 78 cents for every dollar a man will make. In the United States, one in three women will be subject to physical violence by their partner within their lifetime. Sexual violence is still heavily prevalent. Half of all female victims of rape by a partner will go unreported. 60% out of fear of retaliation, victim blaming, or fears of the police. It is the power of women fighting as a collective in a mass struggle that will propel the women's movement forward and fight the ever-consuming system of capitalism. You are never alone, and it is never your fault. Many who identify themselves as feminists seem to believe that the progress made by individual women, particularly wealthy white women, is liberation. However, that cannot be any further from the truth. Wealth and societal power does not trickle down. Dismantling systems of oppression just simply don't work like that. Bare, minimal, bare minimalist performative allyship just doesn't cut it. A few token members of an oppressed group being allowed into the halls of power do not liberate the rest. Idolizing women like Hillary Clinton, Madeleine Albright, or Nikki Haley will not bring the liberation women need. They are a symptom of the disease that is capitalism, imperialism, and patriarchy, and revolution is our only cure. We must stand for women's liberation in the agreements like our lives depend on. 
We also need socialism that says women deserve equal rights. We've seen this accomplished in so many socialist nations, such as Cuba, who has a 50% plus female parliament. Women must have their rights written down and guaranteed in the Ohio Constitution. The Democrats and Republicans will not give us our rights. We have to fight for them, as we've done before, and expand those rights for true, true equality in Ohio. Another area in which is of concern is the rights of farmers. I personally come from a generational, generational lineage of farmers in southeastern Ohio. And for as long as I can remember, for the past 50 or 70 years, my family has owned a small family homestead in Thornville, Ohio. The farm has turned into a livelihood for the Bayshore family for at least four generations. However, with failed policies coming from Washington and corrupt trade laws, this livelihood is becoming harder and harder to maintain. Family farmers are in danger in the United States. The largest threat to family farmers are big agribusiness and corporate farming. Agriculture plays a very important role in part of the whole society. It is the food base supplying populations with foodstuffs and raw materials base for light and food industries, which produce objects for mass consumption. Corporate farming eliminates these livelihoods of small producers in the U.S. by developing and developing countries by using government subsidies and monopoly power to price sustainable goods out of the market. Corporate farmers use their government subsidies to even further drive down grain prices, causing poor family farmers in Africa and Asia who sell their crops on the international market in turn to lower prices, continuing their poverty and undercutting profits. Corporate farms in the United States also exploit migrant workers whose labor rights are not protected and use artificially cheap labor to undercut domestic, small, and medium producers and destroy the fabric of rural communities. We must protect our family farms from the dangers of corporate farming. Family farms are being bought and sold to the highest bidder. Corporate farming concentrates market shares among a small handful of firms, resulting in uncompetitive markets that ultimately hurt consumers and producers alike. They also share profits with a handful of elites instead of the profits going to a collective or family. Corporate farming also creates environmental disaster through excessive pesticide use, soil erosion, genetic engineering, monoculture, concentration of animal waste, and exploitation of animals. They can get away with this due to their lobbying interests in Washington, D.C in which they can afford. The political and economic power of big agribusiness must be checked and balanced by responsive governments and civil societies to create a socially, environmentally, and democratically balanced food production distribution system around the world. We must protect family farms. Citizens and fellow Ohioans, we do not have to continue to live like this. We have the power to change our now and our future for the better. We can create a society for us all. We can stop the doomsday clock ticking sooner and sooner towards more nuclear war. We can stand up for our freedom of association. Our struggles are not one-off events. We are never alone. The Green Party is the only international political party in 90 countries that is ready to tackle the obstacles that we face. As we end today's forum, the Ohio Green Party will begin our 2024 presidential prime. I ask those attending, attending in person and online to vote for the candidate which best represents their ideas. We have some amazing choices in the Green Party in this cycle. I will be proudly represented by any of them. This year will rear some ugly challenges to our democratic process. It is far past time to take the climate crisis seriously. Never again has our future seemed so uncertain, but when people come together and reach for a better future, we have shown that we can change the course of history. These emergencies give us the opportunity to fix Ohio for the better. This election, is the greatest, perhaps our last chance to change course. The children cannot vote, the trees cannot vote, and our planet cannot vote. I ask you, if not now, 